Hey everybody, how's it going out there? Welcome to Movies and Music with AJ. My name's AJ. Thanks for watching. And today we're back with another horror reaction. We're going to be watching Puppet Master from 1989. And, you know, two weeks ago we watched Chucky. And I guess I just thought, you know, let's keep this, you know, killer toy, killer doll motif going. And, uh, yeah, this film, I'm somewhat familiar with the Puppet Master franchise. Only because it seemed like in the early to mid-90s, these movies were always on basic cable. I don't know if it was like the Sci-Fi Channel or USA. I just felt like, you know, I would just be flipping through channels on the weekends and sure enough would see one of these creepy, you know, puppets on the screen. And as a little kid, I was a scaredy cat. You know, I stayed away from horror. So sure enough, if I was flipping through the channels and I saw them, I just kept going. But, um, but yeah, I am familiar with them enough that I'm looking at the poster and I'm like, oh yeah, I recognize that guy. I re you know, the, the one with the white face and the trench coat. I recognize that guy, the one with the spiky head. But yeah, like I said, I watched Child's Play two weeks ago. And if you don't know on this channel, every other Friday I do a horror film reaction. And every Monday I do reactions to, you know, comedy movies, dramas, action, sci-fi, all of it. Um, but yeah, I give horror its own slot, and that's every other Friday. So yeah, the last horror film we did was Child's Play. And I gotta be honest, there was a comment that somebody left on that video, which, it was a good comment. It was, is accurate. And they led it off with a compliment, which, hey, that's the perfect way to approach a stranger. You know, I'm not gonna turn down a compliment. I'm a fan of being complimented. Um, but yeah, this commenter said, you know, they enjoyed my analysis of Child's Play, but, you know, it was kind of disappointing in the sense that I wasn't frightened enough, you know? Um, that if you're gonna do a horror reaction, it's, it's just more entertaining if the person watching is frightened. And I agree with that, honestly. Um, but honestly, I'm also kind of a scaredy cat, which is why I put horror noob in the title of these videos. So I think it was kind of by design that I started this series with, you know, movies like A Nightmare on Elm Street and Child's Play. Because these characters were characters that, even though I hadn't seen the films, you know, I knew of them from pop culture. You know, I knew what these characters looked like, so there was almost kind of a nostalgia thing going on there. You know, as opposed to if I had just started with, like, the scariest movie I could find. Um, which, by the way, uh, I did start this series with Friday the 13th, thinking that it was going to have, you know, it was going to be Jason, this guy in this silly hockey mask. I thought, you know, that should be a good way to ease into these horror movies. And, you know, spoilers, obviously, if you haven't watched... Friday the 13th, but I'm assuming you have if you're watching horror reactions. Uh, but yeah, Jason was not in that film, and it was actually very terrifying. I uh, I don't know how much it came across, but definitely I was like very nervous throughout that whole film, and ended up having like the biggest jump scare of my adult life. I literally jumped out of my seat, and I said the words "oh shit," but I said it like it came from like the depths of me. So, <laughs> uh, cut to black. Oh shit. But yeah, I don't remember if I said this in response to that commenter, but they should definitely go back and check my Friday the 13th reaction. So yeah, basically my strategy with my first few horror reactions was I was trying to ease myself into it with, you know, films that I thought might be not as scary. But I will say that my next horror reaction after today's film, that's going to put us in October. And I thought, you know what, Halloween, October, let's go a little more supernatural with it. So the next movie after this is going to be a supernatural horror thriller. And those tend to scare me a lot. But yeah, so that brings us to today's film, which is Puppet Master. And like I said, um, I think I just remember this film when I watched Child's Play. I was like, you know, there was more than one franchise that was about killer dolls or killer toys. Um, although I guess puppets aren't really toys or dolls. I, it's, it's weird, right? Like, because you don't play with a puppet the way you play with a doll. Um, but anyway, yeah, it's still little creepy figures coming after you with knives. Always a good premise and sure to be entertaining. So yeah, I'm excited. Let's just go ahead and get into it. Without further ado, this is going to be my reaction to Puppet Master from 1989, directed by David Schmoller. I think that's how you say it. Let's go. I'm liking this music. Kind of fun and creepy. And sort of, I don't know if you would call it circusy, but it feels very appropriate for a movie about killer puppets. It kind of feels like video game music. Bodega Bay in 1939, okay. Looks like the puppets are already alive. I'm not gonna see an origin of them coming to life. I'm guessing this guy is the puppet master. I'm guessing this is also a puppet that's running, but he sounds scared. He's like breathing heavy. Oh, 
This guy's look very official. They are coming. Don't worry, don't worry. I'll take care of you. <coughs> 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 <laughs> the little bird tweet sounds. That is such a throwback. Yeah, I recognize this guy. So that's who has been running this whole time. He's dressed kind of like those guys. Some hieroglyphics there. guy really likes his dolls like genuinely seems to care about them it's like complimenting them handling them very gently I mean is he a puppet master because right now he feels more like a puppet father so it's 1939 we got some Germans and some black trench coats I'm guessing these are Nazis or... <laughs> we saw them coming I'm going to hide you he sounds sad. <laughs> so far these puppets are not what I thought they were going to be. They're almost kind of sympathetic. Ooh, it's like that. Not just coming to have a chat. Oh, that's not where I thought he was going with it. Damn. I thought this was a self-defense situation, but I was wrong. It's a great opening sequence. It let's me know who is the keeper of these puppets, that he genuinely cared for them. And like I said, they seem sympathetic. So I'm wondering if they're good right now, but then they get turned evil? The hair. <laughs> You see something, ma'am? Oh, yes. I see many great things for you. In a very short period of time, you two are going to be happily married. <laughs> oh. And you are going to have a little boy. That's really great. I like that. But, um, do you think Buddy here's ever going to get a real job? <laughs> I mean, kids are great now, but you got to be able to pay for them, right? The only thing I see is your grandmother. She isn't going to be around very long. My grandmother's already dead, ma'am. Everyone has two grandmothers. I think something's wrong with her. Oh. Why does this feel genuine? It's like a PTSD flashback she's having. Hello, Alex. You're expecting your call? Uh, you've had contact too, then? Yes, last night while we were experimenting. It was very, very strong. Why all of us at once? It means Gallagher located the old puppet master's hiding place. I want you to come along, Alex. Dana feels that this is not going to be a friendly meeting. It's interesting that there's this group of people who apparently have some shared telepathic or psychic connection. Hello, I'm Megan Gallagher. Somebody married, Neil? Hi, I'm Alex Whitaker. I hope this visit wasn't entirely unexpected. No, no, Neil told me you'd be coming. And where might old Neil be? He shot himself. He left a note. But all he said was he didn't want to be buried until you all arrived. Frank, what the hell is going on around here? What are you doing? Just making sure he is what he appears to be. <laughs> sure, man. It's just that uh, Neil was so obsessed with his work. It's hard to imagine him taking time out to get married. Hickory and dragon's blood. <laughs> <laughs> just what are you, finding it right on her. I'm cleaning your spirit body. 
You are in great danger. Do not go near the fireplace, whatever you do. That's some foreshadowing about how that character is going to die. Hello, sweetheart. <laughs> oh, man. I thought, uh, at first I thought, why is she keeping her dog in a suitcase? Now I know why. It's taxidermied. Man, I've thought about that. My dog, when he dies, he's, he's getting up there. He's like 11 or 12. But he's a terrier chihuahua mix. He's a small dog, so he's still got plenty of ears on him. But yeah, I just, I think about that, like, the idea of having him taxidermied and just, like, without life, but just sitting around somewhere in the house, I just, I think I would get creeped out. Couldn't do it. Who is it? You can't save her. I'm liking this mystery they're setting up. What's wrong? Something happened in this elevator. <laughs> Shelby? It was horrible. What he did to her. <laughs> Creepy. He said he loved me. And he offered to help me run this hotel. Now that sounds like Gallagher. He wanted something. I'm wondering if Gallagher found that box of puppets. Did it ever pass through your sweet, innocent little mind? Did your husband possibly married you for your money? <laughs> oh, you're some piece of work. Your hair is some piece of work. Where well, the puppets get loose? <laughs> Stay away from the fireplace. She was warned. <laughs> what happened? She fainted. Look. Gallagher? No, he's dead. Believe me. That guy plays a convincing corpse. <laughs> Cause even just sitting there with his eyes open, he looked dead as hell. Doesn't make sense. Maybe it's Mrs. Gallagher who's up to something. I wonder if Mrs. Gallagher's hobby is smashing watermelons with a sledgehammer. Why did you come here? I had this dream and I came here to make sure it didn't come true. Why do I feel like it's gonna? We're about to embark on sexual experiment number 517A. Various sexual aids and certain assorted apparatus. Descriptions to follow. <laughs> Descriptions to follow. I'm never gonna get tired of these puppet perspective shots. And the way they do it, like the shadow that you just saw there. Like, they do these environmental things also to let you know they're nearby. You know, the piano. But it's like, they're using sound, they're using visuals, they're using the cinematography. And it's all just so effective to like really just get you to feel the presence of these puppets. You know, but without actually having to show them to you. One thing we know from horror films is don't have sex in a horror film. Otherwise, you're gonna get killed. Oh, it's the guy with the hook hand. <laughs> Cheeky. <laughs> yeah, I'm loving the, just the use of shadows in this. Oh. It's not the kind of drilling they had in mind. This is disgusting. What is that? Chris, stop that! Chris! Oh, that's disturbing. Now you just sit down. Ooh, it's him, right? Oh, creepy. Jeez. That guy is so good at being a corpse. If it is my dear old so friend, creepy. You break your leg? It's a strong puppet. 
<laughs> yeah, it should be a lot easier to do that, but these puppets are pretty strong, I guess. The way they move sort of looks like clay animation style. Like, did that to do frame by frame? <laughs> <laughs> oh no, there he goes. He's got a break, right? Oh, he stays in one piece. I think it's over. It's just a flesh wound. They're in the dining room. <laughs> Dead though, right? We're gonna see some. Oh, yep. She's. <laughs> You're not leaving on my account, are you? That's a twist. I put a gun in my mouth and blew away my vast knowledge. And here I am. Metaphysically speaking, I killed myself. And using the techniques of the old puppet master, I brought myself back to life. I want to live forever. All life eventually ends in death, but for me, there is no end now. And sooner or later, one of you would have learned that I had discovered Toulon's secrets. I had to bring you here. <laughs> Besides... That's the closest we've gotten to them talking, right? <coughs> Oh, they didn't like that. Are they gonna turn on Gallagher? I was always quick with the women. Right, Alex? <laughs> but I feel like anyone who says, I was always quick with the women, actually wasn't. <laughs> the women. Bastard! Oh yeah, they don't... These puppets are looking like they're ready to stage their own revolt. What the hell are you looking at? <laughs> Open that door, you fucking little cretin. You brainless little pinhead, get out of my way. Don't mess with those dolls. I'll get you, Alex. <laughs> oh, that was interesting. Was that? Was that a choice that he didn't have any blood on his drill? Because this guy is technically a corpse, so he wouldn't really have like much flowing blood, or I guess any flowing blood. <laughs> Whoa. That's like the shot from Jurassic Park. Where they're trying to get away from the raptors. Trying to get up into the air vent. Is he gonna cut his fingers off? Oh, nope. Is he bleeding green? It's like supposed to be the embalming fluid or something? No. Oh no! <laughs> the leech the leeches. <laughs> so gross every time. <laughs> so now what with these puppets? I thought the whole thing was that you know they're they were attached to the soul of the person who was their master. Are they free now? Are they independent? Or are they gonna latch onto somebody else's soul? Yeah, this franchise tailor-made for sequels. Like, yeah, you could do so many stories with these puppets. Oh no, is this... I wonder if he did a spell on this dog. I still feel like she's up to something. Yeah! Dog <laughs> Leroy? Leroy is immortal now. It's a good boy! Oh, he looks like he's struggling a bit though. I guess she's the new puppet master. Jimmy Skaggs. Not familiar with him, but I gotta say, he played a corpse so well that even when he was reanimated and walking around he still gave off corpse vibes 
It was a great performance. All right, what a fun movie, you know, just really compact, quick story, really entertaining. It had some great kills, some really memorable kills in it. Um, but honestly, what I love is the promise of it, you know, all the potential that it sets up. You know, it, it did world building right, you know, where it hints at a lot of things. It hints at this wider, bigger world without ever explaining it. You know, it, it still kept the story very compact. You know, it was all basically mostly told in that one location, right? Um, and with these this small group of people, so it felt very intimate in that way, while also hinting at this greater universe of things. And the fact that they start the story in 1939 with these guys, these you know, I think in the credits they were listed as assassins, you know, coming after Toulon. You know, you can do a whole thing with Toulon and his life, you know, maybe in the 1930s, but even like you know further back when he was younger and maybe first getting into this kind of thing. Um, and so we get that flash forward and, and those puppets are still around. Yeah, it just it sets up so much promise. There's so, just so much you can do with it. Which, by the way, do people have favorites? Are there like factions of the fandom of this franchise of like, we're team, you know, hook and knife hand guy. We're team, you know, pinhead guy. Yeah, it feels right for that. My favorite puppet, by the way, was the black trench coat with the hook and the knife. Yeah, he just looks cool. It's a cool look. Uh, I don't, you know, simple as that. I also just like the way he emoted, and you know, when he'd be shocked or surprised, his eyes were like these little spikes that would pop out. That was a fun touch. But yeah, I thought it was kind of a nice touch about how the puppets aren't just inherently evil. You know, they are inanimate objects, so it would make sense that whoever animated them, that it would be whatever was in their spirit or their soul is what influenced the puppets themselves. So I thought that was cool how they're capable of being good if, you know, they were under the control of somebody who has good intentions or a good heart. But yeah, there's definitely that idea that, you know, we can be influenced by our environment and by the, the company that we keep, right? You know, it's like, you know, there's nurture and nature, there's, you know, environmental factors in terms of how we develop and the people that we become. And some of it's innate, but definitely some of it is influence, you know, and the people you're around. So yeah, it's just kind of interesting. Like, it's interesting to think that the inanimate objects around you can be influenced by the kind of person you are. And there's definitely something to that because you ever walk into a room or like, you know, sit on a piece of furniture and like, like you can sometimes tell, like, you look at a couch and I'm like, eh, that, that couch has bad vibes. I don't know about that couch. Um, but same with like a room, you know, you could be in a, you can walk into a room and just get chills, you know, like, um, that definitely happens. So I feel like people's energy definitely sticks to things, you know, it's like, what is that called? There's a name for that. People, people often say, you know, if these walls could talk, but there's, there's a theory about that, that, you know, that walls can keep the energy or the memory of things that have happened or that, you know, furniture or inanimate objects can have a sort of physical memory. Yeah, just so many interesting ideas that just get hinted at in this movie, but it's the kind of movie that, you know, I could definitely have seen myself as a kid if I watched this, just, you know, going down rabbit holes of, you know, just all the ideas that are presented, but never really fleshed out and just kind of put out there for you to just kind of ponder later, you know? I'm glad that's how they went with it. Because, yeah, that opening shot, that those puppets seemed really sympathetic, you know? Like, I, I kind of felt bad for the trench coat one. He was making these little whimpering noises when Toulon was putting them away, you know? Like, you could sense the fear from these puppets, and it's probably because, you know, Toulon himself in that moment was scared because he knew what he had to do. Yeah, anyway, fun film. You know, really tight, really compact. It just went by like a breeze, but... Yeah, it's like I said, it, it sets so much promise up for the future sequels, which I'm sure I'll get to at some point. That's the thing about this channel is, you know, I'm only doing horror reactions every other Friday. So when you're only doing, you know, two a month, you know, it's it, you know, there's just so much out there that I haven't watched that I want to watch before I get to sequels. You know, I enjoyed Child's Play. I enjoyed Friday the 13th, Nightmare on Elm Street. These were all really fun movies. And these are all really long and storied franchises with a ton of sequels. And I want to get to all of them. But, you know, it's probably going to be a minute before I get back to any of these franchises. Just because, like I said, there's just so much horror out there that I need to catch up on. Because it's the genre that I know the least about. Or at least, you know, it's the genre that I've watched the fewest amount of films. Yeah, there's just so much out there. There's so many films, so little time. So yeah, next month is October. Gonna go a little supernatural at first, but then of course, the closer we get to Halloween, hey, there just happens to be a horror movie that's called Halloween, right? Um, so yeah, um, you can probably guess what I'll be watching towards the end of next month. 
So yeah, stick around. And you know, if you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And like I said, if you want to follow along with these horror reactions, I also do weekly Monday movie reactions, and those tend to be comedies, dramas. So yeah, hit that subscribe button if you enjoy what I'm doing and you want to follow along. But signing out for today, this has been Movies and Music with AJ. My name's AJ. Thanks for watching, and have a good day.